Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are talking about Bratwursts, uh, the Autobahn, Volkswagen, uh, all that good stuff. But no, we're, today we're talking about the Germans in the NBA. Uh, because if you haven't seen a video I've done a few weeks ago now, uh, I talked about the Aussies in the NBA. Of course, I am Aussie as well, so I had to talk about them. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this today is because that video, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Because that video did really, really well. Um, you guys loved it. You showed your support with likes and comments. Uh, so I thought I might make this a sort of series uh, talking about different nationalities and I might even implement it into the other sports that I talk about being the NFL uh, and the Premier League somehow. I haven't thought of that far ahead yet, but uh, obviously, yeah, today we're talking about the Germans in the NBA and if you don't know how this sort of video works, uh, we talk about the players, where they've sort of come from, what they've done, uh, revisit you know, their prior seasons in the NBA. Of course, we talk about them right now in the present, where they're playing, how they're doing, like just last season. Uh, and I'll share a little fun fact about each one of them. Just, you know, a nice little fun fact because who doesn't love them? Uh, but without further ado, let's just get into it. The Germans in the NBA, let's go. And I just had to start with this man, Dennis Schroeder. I absolutely love this guy, uh, both off the court and on the court. He just seems like a great bloke. Uh, I think he's got his own YouTube channel as well. He makes videos, so I don't really know what they're about, but he's got a YouTube channel, so there's that. But even on the court, like I just love the way this guy plays, the, the sort of determination, the constant effort. Um, he's just running around. Not the you know, not the best guy, the best player going around, not the best point guard, but so just seems to always do a job and do it well. It's not necessarily been smooth sailing for Dennis Schroeder throughout his career. Uh, he did spend his first five years uh, in the league with the Atlanta Hawks, but since then has bounced around to five different teams. Having said that though, he has been a relatively reliable point guard. You know what you're gonna get, as I said. Uh, and he's been pretty good in most places that he's been. At his peak, he averaged 19.4 points per game, uh, 6.2 assists, and 1.1 steal. Uh, that was in his final season with the Hawks. And then he was traded to the Thunder, uh, and there he experienced some success, success individually, uh, being the runner-up for sixth man of the year in the 1920 season uh, to Montrez Harrell. He won that uh, award there. Uh, but you know, he's, he's had some success where he's been, and obviously we've got to talk about the Lakers. The last season, they made it to the Western Conference Finals, of course, ultimately losing to the Nuggets. Uh, and that was a massive surprise because from a team perspective, they looked way off it. Dennis Schroeder was there for the whole season, and then obviously they made a number of trades, bringing in the likes of D'Angelo Russell, who he sort of, you know, was the better player, I think, ultimately. Um, not necessarily starting all the time, D'Lo there as well, but I think what he brought defensively sort of gave him that edge for me over D'Lo. Um, and, you know, the Lakers had a brilliant run in the finals, a surprise to many, considering they were around that th sort of 13th, uh, halfway through the season. and. Playoffs didn't look like a, a thing at all for them. On the flip side though, he has had a couple of forgettable stints, uh, namely in the 2020-2021 season, where he started at Boston and then was traded uh, before the deadline halfway through that season to a dead team uh, in the Rockets. And so my final fact about Dennis Schroeder is that he was a skater before he picked up a basketball at the age of 11. So a bit of Tony Hawk about him, a bit of a skate on the PlayStation about him. If you know, you know. Here we have one of the big up-and-comers, not just in German basketball, but in the league itself. Franz Wagner has had a great first couple of seasons and probably a big surprise to most. Um, he's already been viewed as a guy that has little to no weaknesses. It, it, obviously he has weaknesses, but he's so well-rounded. Um, he, can, he can score, he can rebound, he can assist. He can basically do it all to a very solid standard uh, and he's still developing, which is brilliant. He also happens to be on one of the most exciting young teams in the NBA, the Orlando Magic. Uh, obviously headlined by Paolo Bancaro and I'm actually going to look to do a video sort of previewing them before the season, so subscribe for that. But seriously, he made the all-rookie first team uh, in the 21-22 campaign. So it just goes to show that this is a young player who's been brilliant to start off with and he's just still developing, can become anything. On top of just being an exciting player, a well-rounded player, he's a reliable one. He's played in 79 games and 80 games in his respective first two seasons, which is just brilliant to see because, you know, this day and age, the NBA, a lot of players sit out for whatever reason, but you don't often see 
uh, anyone these days besides Mikel Bridges obviously got that brilliant streak of uh, consecutive games. You don't see many players getting to that 80 mark. And I've already touched on his versatility as a player. Uh, and to put more context around this with some stats, from year one to two, he's improved his two point percentage and three point percentage while taking more shots, which is just great to see. It's a big year coming up for the Magic uh, and a big year for one of the most underrated young players I feel still. Even though he's had his sort of recognition, I don't think he's talked about quite enough uh, on this Magic team and just in the NBA in general. Uh, and he's also someone that I look at, you know, very young still, I get it, but you know, potentially down the line, he could be viewed in the same sort of conversation as a Dirk Nowitzki, not necessarily in ability, just relax but in terms of German basketball you know this is a guy that could be uh, on in the heights in that, in, that, in that sense not ability just German basketball all right calm down and fun fact about Franz Wagner he has a brother in the NBA right now who we're actually about to talk about right now Great transition, thanks man. Moritz Wagner. God, I love saying German names. Mo Wagner is the brother of Franz Wagner. That little fun fact was a bit of fun. What? But yes, this is the brother of Franz, the older brother. He's been in the league a few more years. Uh, he's not quite up to the standards of his, of his little brother, uh, but you know, he's played a decent role, a decent enough role. And he's on the same team, if you didn't know, both playing on the Orlando Magic. So obviously Franz got drafted a couple of seasons ago, and this is actually when Mo Wagner joined the team as well. Uh, and actually, these have been the best two seasons statistically of his NBA career. So maybe playing with his brother might have lifted him. But ultimately he is a backup option, uh, and particularly in Orlando, behind Wendell Carter Jr., the very exciting uh, center there. He's just a backup option, even though he has been providing decent backup minutes as a center. So he's just had his best season uh, points-wise, averaging 10.5 for the Magic, uh, and two-point percentage as well has never been better. So he's really found a home with the Orlando Magic, uh, and that sort of brother brotherly love, I guess, is strong there uh, while playing under the more exciting, more versatile Wendell Carter Jr. Also, I must mention that Schroeder and the Wagner brothers are all going to be playing in the World Cup, so if you're interested in that, uh, look out for them because they are playing for Germany. But my fun fact for Mo Wagner is that he actually already played professional basketball uh, before even entering the collegiate system. He played in the Euro League, of course, as many of them do, uh, before joining Michigan. So remember how I was saying how much I love uh, Dennis Schroeder and how I think he's just a great bloke and that I would say most people would like him? I mean, I don't actually know that, but there's one person that certainly doesn't like him, and that's Maxi Kleber. So basically, if you don't know, uh, to sort of sum it all up, Dennis Schroeder was quite critical uh, last year, I believe it was on, on a podcast or something, uh, at the decision where Maxi Kleber decided not to play for Germany uh, in a tournament last year because he wanted to work on his game, uh, and basically Dennis Schroeder said he had no game. And on top of this, uh, Maxi Kleber has also refused to not play for Germany in the upcoming FIBA World Cup. So there's certainly one person in the world that really doesn't like Dennis Schroeder. But I mean, on Maxi Kleber's actual NBA career, uh, Dennis Schroeder's comments aren't necessarily so far off. Uh, he, he said, he, and I quote, uh, you throw it to him in the corner, uh, you defend, uh, and you're a pick and roll type guy. So he's not really wrong, is he? Maxi Kleber has been very much a role player uh, in his time in the NBA. And more interesting, he's actually stayed on the same team uh, his whole NBA career with the Dallas Mavericks uh, every season. And in terms of his best season, that came back in the 1920 season, as in the 2019-2020, the not 1920. Yeah. In that season, he played 74 matches and he averaged 9.1 points, but it hasn't really reached that height since. And the reason it really hasn't reached those sort of heights, I mean, not it's not necessarily super high, but injuries have impacted him uh, quite a bit, Maxi Kleber, uh, particularly back and, and sort of knees and, and legs and basically everything. He's, he's been uh, not playing very much in the last year or two. And so going into this season, it'll be quite an interesting one because the Mavericks have actually added a number of pieces uh, that are not necessarily starting pieces that could garner those off the bench minutes. Uh, and so Maxi Kleber still being there, 
who knows if he actually gets uh, much game time this season for the Mavericks. And my fun fact for Maxi Kleber is that uh, that other German fellow that I talked about, Dirk Nowitzki, uh, him and Kleber actually grew up in the same hometown of Würzburg. I think that's right, but uh, yeah, there you go. So I must say with uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, I really like this guy. For In terms of backup centers, as far as they go, he's one that I really like. What he brings to the game in terms of his just physical presence, his defense, I really like him. Um, and he's sort of bounced around the league a little bit, but he seems to have found a home with the Knicks, which is great. And the season just gone, his rebounding numbers uh, stood out particularly. Uh, he averaged 6.5, coming off the bench, obviously back up to Mitchell Robinson. Uh, and this was all while playing every single match, so he was available, and that's great. And if you are turning on the FIBA World Cup coming up soon, uh, Isaiah Hartenstein won't be in the squad. Whether or not that's got to do with uh, our friend Schroeder, I don't think so. I don't think it's beef related. And my fun fact for Hartenstein, if you didn't know, he played in the Euro League, but he debuted at the age of 16 uh, in the Bundesliga and then played in the Lith Lithuanian top flight. That's a mouthful, God. I don't know about you, but uh, Daniel Tice is not someone that I'd particularly want to run it into on a night out in a random alley. I don't know what it is, but basketball-wise, he's been a decent enough role player. Recently, though, uh, injuries have hampered him quite a bit. He only managed the seven games for the Pacers last season. Uh, he is returning, so we'll see how much game time and if he can stay injury-free uh, this upcoming season. His best season in the NBA did come uh, while he was on the Boston Celtics during the 2019-2020 season, uh, where he averaged 9.2 points, 6.6 rebounds, and 1.3 blocks. Daniel Tyson sort of bounced around the league like many, uh, playing for the Bulls, the Rockets, having another stint with the Celtics on their playoff run where they lost in the finals to the Warriors. Uh, sorry if you're not over that yet, but he was there, and then he's obviously, as I said, going back to the paces. And my fun fact about Daniel Tice is that some say he's the poor man's bird man. Uh, and by a fun fact, I mean that's not a fact, and by some people, I've never heard anyone say that, but I just thought of it because, I mean, look at him. He, he looks like he's on the verge of turning into Birdman 2.0. Like, he'll just go through a midlife crisis and turn into Chris Anderson. Am I the only one? And now we've got a new kid on the block, uh, Joshua BC, although technically might not actually be relevant because he's only just signed a camp deal with the Rockets, uh, so he technically might not actually even end up on an NBA roster. So we'll see, but we're still going to talk about him. Joshua BC went undrafted in 2019, uh, and he's since been playing his trade in the Euro League. Uh, he's a six foot six wing, and he averaged last season uh, 12.1 points, 3.2 rebounds, and 3.2 assists in 24 minutes per game. And my fun fact about Joshua Abisi is that he played in the Germany under 18 team uh, in the Albert Schweitzer tournament. How good is saying German eight? You just give it a go. He played in that tournament and led them to the gold medal. So good on him. But that's all I've got for you today, guys. That is all the Germans in the NBA today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, let me know in the comments below. I love hearing about it every single video, what you think. Uh, and let me know if you do enjoy this sort of video, what other countries you want me to talk about. Uh, is it a, a France? I've got them on the list as potential ones. A Serbia, Spain, any of them. Um, I'd love to do the, more of these videos because you did enjoy the first one. So uh, let me know what your thoughts are. And if by any chance you are a German watching this or have German descent and know German things, uh, let me know what I got wrong or what I missed out or just let me know anything about Germany. I don't know. Uh, and if you did enjoy this video, as I said, like and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Uh, and without further ado, I'll see you in the next one.